Hey, this is Christopher Trout here with Engadget, and we're at Sony's CES 2014 booth with Sony's Kaizo Harai. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Very good, thank, thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having me. So you just got done with a pretty big CES kickoff keynote. Yes, indeed. And you showed off some, some pretty fantastic stuff. I wonder if there are devices here that you're most excited about. Well, you know, at, at the keynote, I talked about really instilling that sense of wow, yeah. the excitement in all of our products, and I think a lot of the products uh, that we have on display right here, whether we're talking about the latest ultra high definition 4K televisions, uh, our uh, new camcorder in 4K, smartphones, our wearables, uh, you know, I think they're all instilling that sense of wow. So I'm really excited with all the products that we have here on display at CES. We've seen a big push over the past year or so, even a little bit before that, in, in ultra high definition 4K mm -hmm. from you mm -hmm. guys. I'm wondering if you've seen an uptick in adoption, consumer adoption of those, those devices. Yeah, I think we're steadily seeing uh, more and more adoption um, of 4K televisions. And because uh, per unit average selling prices are obviously higher, uh, you know, the percentage of revenue that the 4K business generates is actually now becoming pretty significant. Um, and we expect that trend to continue. And I think a lot of people have been talking about, uh, you know, content, native 4K content uh, for their televisions. Uh, and we've been providing native 4K content through our Sony Pictures. Uh, and now, um, you know, we actually just introduced yesterday, this is a 4K camcorder uh, that's very light uh, and uh, very small compared to our previous model. And uh, we call it 4K for uh, 2K, so it's about $2,000. Uh -huh. And uh, so a lot of people are going to be able to just go out and, you know, take family moments um, in, in 4K now and enjoy it on their Bravias. And this is a, a big step down price-wise from the previous 4K camcorder that you had. Yes. I wonder if you have a prediction of when we'll see UHD adoption levels hit sort of uh, the same adoption levels as HD. Well, I think that is something that's going to take uh, several years. Uh, I think the the price for the uh, the televisions need to you know obviously and they'll eventually come down. Right. Uh, but at the same time, it's also making sure that it's not just Sony, but we as an industry, we're providing ways of accessing more more 4K content. So you know whether we're talking about the camcorder. Um, or, you know, for uh, native 4K content to be delivered to uh, everybody's homes. And obviously we had the announcement with Netflix yesterday, Reed right. Hastings was on stage talking about their new 4K streaming service, which I think adds another dimension. And as I mentioned, uh, since last year, we have our own proprietary Sony 4K box where we uh, have a lot of Sony uh, Pictures content available in 4K as well. So that's the kind of, I think, uh, you know, spiral that we need to create Again, not just with Sony, but as an industry, to really get that adoption rate going. Will we be seeing more collaborations with other uh, sort of streaming services uh, between Sony and, and the likes of like Google Well, Plus you know, or... it, we've always been about choice uh, to our customers, and obviously we have our own very own music unlimited service. We have video unlimited service. Uh, but at the same time, we work with, for example, just yesterday with Netflix. Uh, we work with a lot of other content providers as well because it's really about making sure that we offer the customer's choice in their entertainment options. So in UHD, we've seen a big collaboration across all of Sony's, or most of Sony's, uh, different businesses. Uh, and I think today we saw another collaboration across devices, which is uh, PlayStation Now. Can you tell us a little bit more about PlayStation Now and how it's going to work? Uh, PlayStation Now is actually something that we've always talked about, uh -huh. but was not able to deliver because of network restrictions and latency issues, what have you. Uh, but now that we've acquired Gaikai uh, a while back, we've been working with Gaikai to really deliver a PlayStation experience uh, through the network with the least amount of latency um, and ease of use. And what that allows us to do is not only deliver PlayStation content to PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, PlayStation Vita, but down the road, it's going to allow us to provide the same PlayStation service or content to tablets, smartphones, whether they be on Android or uh, you know uh, on an iPad, for example. And that really expands the world of PlayStation beyond the PlayStation specific consoles. And I think it bodes well for certainly for PlayStation, but also for uh, you know the game content creators as well, and most definitely for the customers. Well, he's seeing it extend beyond Sony devices then. Absolutely. Right. And that's that's the whole concept behind PlayStation now. Cool. Are we going to see more collaboration across, across devices in the future? Absolutely. I think one of the most important things uh, that, that I uh, ask of my management team, and certainly of the entire company, um, is really to be able to look across the various business units that we have within Sony to say, you know, 
who has what assets and how can we combine them to make for a more compelling WOW product. And I think one of the best examples of that uh, today, and we certainly have it here at the booth, um, and I have it right here, really is, uh, for example, the Xperia Z1 smartphone, where we're trying to redefine the smartphone through, in this instance, the digital imaging technology. So we had a lot of our digital imaging Cybershot engineers actually work together with the Sony mobile smartphone guys to really incorporate the best that we have in digital imaging technology right into our smartphones. Uh, and that sort of collaboration I see is going to happen more and more because I think the consumers expect, especially from Sony, that they're getting the best of Sony. Um, and that's what we intend to deliver and I think a lot of that collaboration is already happening and is obviously going to continue more into the future. Over the past year, we've seen a lot of change at Sony, and I wonder if you can tell us a bit about the challenges that you've seen in, in the transition from Sony before you came on and where you are now. Well, I think one of the most important things that I've tried to instill um, is really that one Sony uh, concept where, you know, whether it's within the electronics business or whether it's uh, working together with the PlayStation folks, whether it's working together with Sony Music, Sony Pictures, uh, you know, everybody really needs to understand that we are all in it together. We may be in different businesses, but the common thread that really binds everybody at Sony, whether you're in hardware or entertainment, is that we're here to really bring wow to our customers, through our movies or through our cell phones, smartphones, through all of our products. And you know, I think when people really understand that, you know, a, a new level of, of collaboration really starts to happen. And that's the culture that I've been trying to really bring about and bring to the forefront uh, you know, as I took over the, uh, the, the president's position. We saw a pretty new, fantastic new technology that you, that you launched today uh, on stage called Life Space UX. Correct. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that. Sure. Uh, you know, one of the things that, you know, at least when I look at the landscape is, you know, we have all these great products, but still we're talking about a TV screen that's physical that you need to put somewhere uh, that you know you're not going to carry your TV screen around you know too many different places. Mobile devices have smaller screens you can take around, but they're not big. Um, so I challenge my engineers to really think about ways in which we can actually do away with the boundaries of a physical uh, screen and you know look at the wall that you have in your house as a area to really project something. And what the engineers came up with is this is a 4K. 147 inch maximum short throw projector uh, that really just creates a window into the world in vivid 4K right in your living room. So watching movies, you know, and that stuff, that's very exciting. But to me, what really excited me was just, you know, projecting an image of a street in New York or in Tokyo and everything is literally in, in life size. So you're literally transported to that location. And that sort of new experience is something that I think we have a lot of potential to bring right into the people's homes. So LifeSpace UX right now is a, it's a pretty pricey proposition for consumers. Do you see driving down the price on that? Is this something that you guys are going to push? Yeah, I think that uh, you know, obviously as we begin these new types of uh, products, uh, you know, we have to start high. But you know, as the adoption becomes more and more uh, you know, high in terms of percentage, the prices will come down. And obviously, you know, the short throw projector, the 4K short throw projector that we talked about today is just the start of, you know, what we consider to be the life space UX. We also have a prototype of a projector that projects onto a table uh, and you can basically put, you know, photos or whatever you have on your PC, literally, and you can just, you know, move stuff around with your fingertips uh, right on your, you know, for example, dining table. Uh, and so that sort of thing, again, is a different application, if you will, or different experience in, uh, in really enjoying content in your home. So, you know, we have a lot of stuff that we're just, uh, you know, providing as kind of ideas, thought-provoking ideas, and really want to get people's feedback to say, well, that's cool, maybe that's not so much cool, and then, you know, we kind of move on from there. So it's a bit of an experiment for Well, for it's, 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 uh, it's an, well, the, the short throw projector is, is, is really a product coming out. Yeah. The other things, you know, it's basically just, you know, just putting ideas and making it into an actual, uh, you know, a prototype and to say, you know, get people's feedback on it. Yeah. And then some things will improve upon, some things will perhaps change, uh, you know, but that's, that's what CS is all about. Well, I'm interested to see what you guys have coming in the future, and thank, thank you, you. For, for talking with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a pleasure. It's great to meet you. Thank you.